Today I'm going to show you how to make roja. It's a tropical fruit salad from Malaysia covered in peanuts that is one of the best things to eat on a hot night. I've got so many good memories of visiting my family there and going to a hawker center and trying out the best and I'm going to show you how I tried to recreate it. So rojak means mixed and it's usually made up of a mix of tropical fruits and vegetables and some little crunchy items as well. There's no basic recipe for it because everyone at the different hawker store is going to have their unique twist on it. So what I'm trying to do today is kind of go back into my memories and really get the taste that takes me back to my childhood. So I have pineapple, which you'll kind of always see featuring in rojak. Maybe also other tropical fruits like guava or it's really cute little pink fruit, which I think is called water apple that I know as jumble or green mango. You'll often find green apple. So this is something that, you know, you shouldn't let just sit in your fruit bowl as a boring snack, but cook with it and adds a lot of crunch and flavor. Cucumber, super fresh and kohlrabi, which is standing in for hikama. It's like a root vegetable, like a turnip, which is crunchy and kind of savory. And so that goes really nicely with all the sweeter elements that we have. I've got a nice block of pre-fried tofu from the Asian supermarket, which I really love. And then I also have a very unorthodox addition, uh, which you don't really find in Rojak, and it's red onion, purely because I love the bite of it with the pineapple. And also cucumber and red onion is something you find in a lot of other Malaysian dishes and something you'll always have like next to satay. So for me, it's just kind of like pops the memories out. I guess. So I'm actually going to start, no, not with you, pineapple, with the red onion. We're going to quickly pickle it because otherwise it has a bit of a punch. Sorry, I'm like stuck with an evil onion. I'm actually mining Bitcoin down here. We're just going to slice our onion. You can slice it however you like, but I think for a quick pickle rounds always works best. Anyway, roughly chopped. <laughs> About half a lime's worth of juice in there. Didn't roll it. A fork always helps. So just toss them with the slime. Don't cry. <laughs> it's just those memories of flavor hit me hard. <laughs> Sometimes I like to cover them with a little bit of water too, just to keep them submerged. And that also kind of makes them chill out a bit. And the good thing about this recipe is when I say roughly chop, I really do mean roughly chop. It's the kind of recipe where they will prepare it for you on the spot if you get it. Just get it to the skin. And what I love about like the big hawker center, so if you don't know what that is, that's like a big, often like a big outdoor shed, like open air with lots of different stalls everywhere selling, you know, what they're, what they're expert in making. In Malacca, where my family come from, there was a re really big one and I remember just going there with uh, my cousins and my aunties and everyone kind of says, you know, go there for this dish and go there for that dish and you just get what you want but also share and it's just the perfect way to eat food I think. So we're going to cut around the core. You can cut it as big or small as you like. You kind of want it bite-sized because we're going to eat it with skewers. So throw your knife skills out the window and just have fun. And then I'm just going to put all of the prepped veg in a big bowl. Pining for apple is done. And actually speaking of apple that's the one we want to add next because the pineapple is nice and acidic so it's going to stop the apple itself from browning. Saved from the fruit bowl. Again, we're just gonna roughly chop that one and throw it in. What I really love about this recipe is it's a fruit salad, but not as you would maybe otherwise know it because it's in a really savory sauce that has like chili and tamarind and things in it. And it just, I think it's such a waste to let fruit be a boring snack. So, woohoo! Gonna prep the cucumber now. Um, you often find it peeled in Malaysia and I don't often tend to peel the cucumbers because it does add a nice bit of flavor But what I'm gonna do is half peel it because this also lets the dressing soak in once you toss it So and again, I'm gonna do just that kind of random chopping at different angles Oops. Oh! Missed <laughs> Malaysian food is not something that I always cook at home because I think I'm quite intimidated because my mum is a real expert at it. And if I visit my family there, they are like insane cooks. And it's really hard to find outside of the country. Yeah, I don't know if I've seen Rajat really outside of Malaysia. So the time has come where I get over my fear of not finding the exact ingredients and make it myself. And now share my fears with the world and hope you enjoy them. <laughs> Now we get to the kohlrabi. Just gonna cut the ends off and you can either cut the skin off or peel it. I'm just gonna keep going with the knife. 
We'll just clean this guy out and make him presentable. So this is my sub in. Could not have chosen a more German vegetable, perhaps. And it's gonna stand in for the jicama. You could also use any other kind of radish. Like I would imagine daikon radish could work really nicely. Yeah, just anything that's more muted in comparison to the cucumber and the pineapple. And also on a hot day, just crunching into something is just extremely satisfying. You don't need like the heavier things that you might be looking for. Other vegetables that you can add are things like blanched bean sprouts. You can also add water spinach, what we call kung kong in Malaysia. So now I've got to the tofu. Lots of different hawker stalls have their own little twist on the dish. So you might find like uh, prawn crackers in there for crunch or crispy tofu. I'm going for fried tofu, which is really firm and it absorbs whatever seasoning you put on it really well. I'm just gonna cube it and it's gonna go into the salad raw, cold. You might be used to um, having your tofu heated up, but this has such good bite to it. It's something you can really sink your teeth into. So it is like a filler in the salad. But you can also find one of my favorite things, yu cha kueh, as they're called in Malaysia, but maybe you know them as UTL, so Chinese fried dough sticks. They've chopped them up, deep fried, and tossed them in the salad at the end, and that just adds this delicious, like, oily crunch. All right, so I've put about half a block of tofu in. I'm showing you a no-cook version of the recipe, but you could also deep fry it and put it in just before you serve it at the end for, like, some more textural contrast. I'm gonna squeeze a little bit more lime on there, just to be sure nothing browns. Half the lime. I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt just for the tofu, but not too much because the sauce, which you're about to get to, has a lot of flavor in it, and that's kind of like the main seasoner. Just a little bit. Toss it. We're onto the sauce, and the sauce is the thing that makes this dish so distinctive. It's really thick and syrupy, and it's usually based on two um, very Malaysian ingredients that are both based on shrimp. And these are the things I couldn't find that I had to replace. You would use Blachan, it's like a twice fermented, dried, compacted block of shrimp paste. It smells really, really strong. And you usually would toast it to both kind of like bring out the flavor and temper it. Growing up, I just hated the smell of, I wasn't really into seafood. And when my mum would fry it to make sambal, which is like a Malaysian chili sauce slash paste that you eat with a lot of things, um, it would just kind of like fire up the house. The smell would just shoot down the hallway and I would be running and be like, no Blachan again. But I absolutely love it these days. Um, it adds just this, note of complexity to lots of dishes and it does make a lot of dishes feel so distinctively Malaysian. Maybe in different places you could get a hold of it, I couldn't. So what I have done is really tried to recreate the sauce in a way that at least when I taste it, I'm like, mm, that tastes like Roger. Fish sauce is gonna have to stand in for that today. And the other thing, because it is a really syrupy sauce, uh, is a paste called Heiko or Petis Udang, another shrimp product. And that's actually a sweet, Syrup. It looks like molasses. I'm replacing it with sweet soy sauce, which has that beautiful syrupiness and is really caramelly. A new word. Tamarind, we have. You can get this at any Asian supermarket. And if you don't know what tamarind is, it's a fruit. It's a, it goes in a pod like this. The tamarind that we use in cooking is the pulp inside. You'll find it either in a block, which you then dissolve in hot water. Or for this purpose, I'm using the concentrate, which it's super sour and super sweet. It smells kind of like caramel in a way. A lot of tasting notes and it's really good. I don't have uh, tablespoon measures at home. I noticed as I was trying to get the ratio right for this dressing that the only thing I had was like a big measuring jug or a jigger, which is funny because I also don't tend to uh, measure my cocktails. Anyway, it was very useful for this recipe because we have 30 mils on one side, 15 mils on the other. So we are going to go in with 15 of tamarind. Might not seem like a lot, but it's concentrate, so. Sorry, that was a terrible noise. Now we're gonna go in with another 15 of fish sauce. That's gonna add, I'm gonna say, delicious fishiness to the sauce. 60 ml, so two shots basically, <laughs> of sweet soy sauce. This also replaces the palm sugar that would usually be in the recipe because it has this really delicious, I keep saying caramel, but that really is kind of like the base note of this, this sauce and something you find a lot in Malaysia cooking, palm sugar or sweet soy sauce. It gives it a kind of heft and richness. <laughs> Not the cleanest tool in the world, but it really works. So we're just gonna whisk that together before the final ingredient goes in. Oop, splash. Taste the sauce to see if the ratio is correct. It's big. 
and it needs to be big because it's going through the whole salad. So it's really sour, but it has those caramel notes of the sweet soy sauce and a little bit of a kick from the fish sauce. So to that, we're gonna add another kick, which is fresh chili. This is another thing that you'll often find, it's called chili paddy, which uh, when you serve Malaysian food, you'll have like some soy sauce with freshly sliced chili in there and you'll add that to your dish to kind of adjust the, the heat of it. Um, I'm not gonna take the seeds out because this should be hot and it is gonna be dispersed throughout the salad. Mm. Mm. It could have more, but to me that already tastes like Malaysia, the taste of raw chili and soy sauce. Very evocative. I would actually go in with another, to be honest. When you're cooking with chilies, like you can't really ever know how hot the chili is unless you're gonna try it raw, which is not always advisable. So I think always start off with the lesser amount of chili and then just build up, you can add, but can't take away. Chopping red chili just is very, very triggering in terms of memories. I'm adding roasted sesame seeds to the sauce. I had to consult my mum on this one. So her work has been based in Malaysia for the last 30 years, so she's a real expert and super passionate about Malaysian cooking. She will often like go online and research how people are doing things based on what ingredients they can find in other countries. So I did workshop this a lot with her to make sure that at least if it wasn't original, it was as close to being respectable as it could. So now we're gonna add the dressing to the salad. What I'm gonna do is just toss it all in here and then serve it up individually. Grab the red onion and toss that through. It's not fully pickled, but it's got the, you know, the heavy bite out of it and it's gonna taste a bit limey. Ah, salad service. At this point, I'm really gonna need to dig deep into the salad. And the sauce is gonna go in. It looks really beautiful going on because it's so syrupy and that just looks like fried All right. We have tossed the salad and now I'm gonna serve up a little portion. I think the smell of the pineapple is so strong and also when you get those like sour notes or the smell of the soy sauce and the fish sauce with the pineapple, it's kind of like, hmm. Roger, is that you? <laughs> that you? It's been so long. What I'm gonna do now is just pour some extra sauce on top. And that is giving me Rajak. And now the finishing touch is roasted peanuts. So I'm using pre-roasted peanuts, but it always pays to kind of re-roast them yourself because you'll get that richer flavor to it. And they just go on top. Bit of lime. Rajak is ready and it's a dish best shared. So I am going to invite very helpful schütze to come try. Why am I always starting with this? So what should I do? All right, it's often served with little sticks in it so people can just try and share different bits. So I would recommend trying some green apple and some pineapple on there. Enjoy. Mmm. The sauce is really nice. I love fish sauce and tamarind sauce and everything you put in there. So okay, so now you like it. Will yes. you make this at home? Yes, definitely, because the ingredients are something that I normally have at home. And also all the sauce, it's like tangy, a little bit sweet, and it's just very flavorful. So I am excited to try it at home. And it's so easy. It's just shopping. So it's just shopping, shopping and chopping. Two favorite activities. If you like the video, please hit like and subscribe. And let's talk about Malaysian food in the comments. I'm ready. OK, that's really good. I can't stop eating this. Endorsement. Okay, I'm gonna take this whole plate away. <laughs> Bye! Bye! <laughs> Raw? Jack? Jack. Roger. Ah, oh, with okay. Yeah, Roger. 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 Roger that. <laughs> I Roger that.